Welcome back. Thought today we'd do a black canvas that has maybe a happy little waterfall and a bubbling little stream running down through it. Now, I've went ahead and prepared the canvas to save a little bit of time. If you're doing this at home, this is a black canvas that's painted with a flat black acrylic and allowed to dry. And then I've taken and made a circle here of alizarin crimson. The top is Prussian blue, and the bottom half of the canvas I've covered with a layer of blue and Van Dyke brown, Prussian blue and Van Dyke brown, and then just wiped it all together. So let's make some happy little clouds in the sky. I'm gonna start with a fan brush and a little bit of titanium white, very small amount. And we'll begin building some happy little clouds here. Very little paint because it's gonna pick up the color it's underneath and, and just make all kind of happy little things happen. There we go. Just let it bounce through the sky and play. See how it's picking up the blue? There. Okay, now maybe there's another little cloud right here. Just let these clouds just float around wherever you think there should be one. Okay, there we go. And just let them feather back. Okay, now with a large brush, I'm gonna very gently blend the bottom of these clouds out. Okay, now we'll do this one. Just the bottom of the cloud. We don't want to touch the top yet. And then we'll fluff it up a little bit. And then just gently blend it. Super nice little way to make clouds. And we'll put a few more little clouds in here. Maybe, maybe there's one right here. Just floating around. Now these black canvases are so much fun. We've done quite a few of them on this series because we've had so many requests for them. There we go. Just let him float around the sky. Blend it out, not touching the top of the cloud. Just little circles, little tiny circles. Fluff it up a little bit and blend it out. And you do these clouds in layers. Do the one that's farthest away first and work toward yourself. Okay, a little bit more of the titanium white. And maybe there's a nice one here. Keep your brush moving. Keep it moving at all times. You don't want to end up with great big cotton balls up in the sky. There. There we go. And with a large brush, we'll just blend that out, not touching the top edge. And here it's beginning to touch the crimson. So we're getting a difference in values now, a difference in colors. Okay. Maybe one more little cloud. A little fluffy one right here. There we are, that gives us a nice little cloud. We'll blend the bottom of it out. Okay. Then blend it out. Super simple, nice little way to make clouds. And the black canvas works fantastic. Now I'll clean the brushes. Okay. Now let's make some little evergreens back in the distance here. And for that, I'll take some Van Dyke Brown, a little Crimson, and a little touch of Prussian Blue. We're looking for a color that looks black here, very, very dark. Load a lot of paint into the fan brush, just load it full. There. And we'll just make little indications of trees way back here in the distance. Touch the canvas and go downward, just so we have silhouettes. There we go. This is a nice way to make a lot of little tree indications very rapidly. Save you a lot of time. Okay. And we could put a little detail here and there on some of them. Maybe they're a little larger 
but mostly just looking for indications. Okay, and let it just come right down the hill here, just like so. Okay, now maybe, maybe over here there's a nice one, bigger one. Some little ones beside him. This is your world, so let your imagination go crazy. Whatever makes you happy, you put in your world. Just about got a nice indication of a tree line back here now. There we go. Now maybe, maybe here and there, you want to put a little more detail in a few of these trees. And that'll indicate they're a little bit closer to you. Okay. And here I'm just putting a little color on. Okay, now, now, let's start and make a little tiny waterfall that's far off in the distance. I've added a very, very slight amount of magic white to the paint, just to thin it a little bit. And maybe my waterfall will be here and we'll have a babbling little brook coming down. So let's start right about here and go across and let it fall. Just across and down. Try to do that in one stroke so the lines come all the way down. And then we'll begin putting some little foamy things where it's hitting here. Let it begin working forward. There we go. Just all these happy little things happening in here. Okay. And once again, I have a very small, small amount of magic white mixed with my titanium white. Just to make it a tiny bit thinner. You know, when you have a babbling little brook running down through here, a lot of times you have, have little tiny stones under the water where the water will hit and bounce and play. There we go. You might not see that stone, but he's there. Just create some interesting little things in here. And the water hits and plays and bounces around. Maybe there's another little stone right here. Look at that son of a guy. Isn't that fun? I sincerely hope you're painting along with us today because this is a fun picture. And it teaches you so many things. Oh, maybe there's another one right there. Just let your imagination take you wherever you want to go. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back into my dark color here and put a few trees that are a little bit closer sitting down here on the hill. There we are. Okay. Now let's take <clears throat> a little bit of cad yellow and sap green mixed together. Maybe we'll put a tiny, tiny bit of ochre in it too, just to dull it down a little bit. There we go. And let's have some grassy little areas coming down through here. Just touch, push, make the fan brush bend upward. I want to create the illusion of a hill coming down. There we go. Don't let it get too bright on you. grassy things happening. And maybe back here, maybe, I'll tell you what, let's, let's put a nice cliff back here in front of this little waterfall. That'll push everything back quite a bit. Like so, there we are. And I'm gonna take just the 
tiniest amount of burn umber. You just put a little highlight up here, just a tiny bit. And angles are very important when you're doing rocks. Watch the angles. There. Now that sort of pushes the waterfall back a little bit further. Creates a little more distance, a little more depth in the painting. And then we can put some happy little things going right up the side here. And just let them fade right out to nothing. There we go. And maybe with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, we'll put a few little stones and some banks and stuff right along in here. Just wherever you want. And I'm going to highlight those with burn umber, just a little bit. Okay, and then we'll go back to our little grassy color here and bring it all together. Okay. Now, let's come over on this side of the canvas. And I'll use a one-inch brush. I'll be a little bit faster. And we'll take some Van Dyke Brown, a little crimson, a tiny bit of blue. And we'll put some happy little things happening over here and begin closing this little waterfall in. There. Okay. Bend that brush. Really push it. Okay, now, use a little tiny bit of Magic White on the one-inch brush, and we'll go into some Cad Yellow and back to the Sap Green. A little bit of ochre added to it, just to dull it down. Don't want it to get too bright on us. But you never imagined you could paint a waterfall like this. And if you're painting along with us, you have a pretty good picture going already. There we go. Now, let's drop in another little bush right here. And I'll go back to the fan brush now and begin laying in some little grassy areas, just going right up the hill here. Make that brush bend upward. There. Now with a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, we'll put some little banks in here. There we go. Just let them protrude right out into the water. All right. We're beginning to have a waterfall here. Bubbling little stream. Aren't these black canvases fun, though? We have an absolute ball teaching you how to do these. Okay, a little tiny bit of the burn umber, just to highlight a little. Okay. Now, back to my fan brush, and we'll bring all this together. get very dark back in here. There. Okay, now, bring this together, and we'll be ready to play some more here in the water. Okay. Alrighty, let's get the old fan brush here and finish up the stream, and then we can we can play a little bit. I think we have a few minutes here, and we can just we can just have some fun. A little touch of the magic white, firm white, mixed together, and we can begin splashing water all up against the 
the rocks and the stones and the banks here. Let it splash. Maybe once in a while it runs up on there a little bit. There we go. There's another one of those little stones under the water. You knew it was there, didn't you? You just wanted to see if I'd remember and put it in. There. Look at all that action's happening in that water. That's what makes this so much fun. There he went again, right up the side. All the little actions in the water. Moving water is something we avoid so often, and it's so much fun. But it's like everything else. It takes a little bit of practice. And turn your fan brush from one side to the other. You'll find that one side bends better than the other one does. And you'll have to experiment. Every single fan brush in the world has its own personality. You have to make friends with a little rascal. Let me tell you what. Let's put a happy little stone right out here in the water. At least one. If we have time, maybe we'll put a couple more in. That was Van Dyke Brown, and now I go back to the umber. And put some little highlights on it. And we'll wrap some water right around that stone. Splash a little bit up here and there, and then... Isn't that something? There. As I say, after all these years of painting, it still fascinates me that this works like this, isn't it? Works for people who have never painted. We see it every day in the classroom. Okay. Let's take the knife now and just make a few little twigs and sticks here and there. All I'm doing is using a clean knife and scraping right through the paint. Makes it look like little twigs and little sticks. Feeling brave today? Let's do some crazies. I think we have time here. I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown on the knife. Get a lot of Van Dyke Brown. And maybe, maybe there's a great big tree that lives right here. Maybe this old tree. Maybe he's tired and maybe he's dead. Let's do a dead tree. He's fixing to fall over and make a natural bridge right across this little stream and the water will play around him and have fun and just have a good time. You know, probably, to me, one of the nicest sounds in the world is listening to a little stream as it bubbles along, and plays and hits the rocks and the stones. And in Alaska, I have, a, I have a great deal of fun going out in the woods and just sitting next to a stream and listen to it. Okay. And let's take, let's take a tiny bit of permanent red and some burn umber mixed together. And we'll lay a little bit of highlight on this tree, just enough to get it to stand out. There we go. Just here and there. Just where you think light will strike us. Okay. Now the other side, I'll use a little bit of Prussian blue. Just to indicate a little reflected light. Just a little bit. And all we're doing here is touching the canvas and allowing it to pull the paint off the knife. It's like taking the bus and leaving the driving to us. Let the knife do the work. And 
this is just a little Van Dyke brown. I'm just sort of bringing it all together now to give it a nice bark appearance. All I'm doing is touching and pulling the knife straight out. And let's, let's, let's take the fan brush. And let's take a little bit of the Van Dyke brown. A little bit of umber mixed with it. Just mix it on the brush. And let's put a few, let's, if this is a dead tree, let's put a few limbs hanging here and there on it. Just, just touch and let the fan brush go. Just touch straight on. Maybe there's a big old limb hangs way out like that. Make him a little bit wider. Gotta make him strong. There we go. And, oh, here's one right here. I see him. Maybe he sort of curls around. When I was a little boy, that's the size of limb my mother used to get to punish me when I was bad. Actually, I was raised in Florida, and my mother used to use palmettos. And if she sees this, she's going to kill me for telling you. But she knows that she's my favorite lady in the whole world, so I think she'll forgive me. Just a few little limbs here. Maybe there's one we can't see. It's on up here on the tree. Can't see where it starts, but it just sort of hangs down here. Give him a little arm. Now, clean the brush. And I'll take a little bit of the permanent red and burn umber mixed together. There we go. And we'll highlight the limbs a little. Just touch and follow your limb right on down, like so. This burn number is a beautiful color. There. Okay, and just highlight it a little bit, just enough so it stands out a little. Doesn't have to be real bright. Okay. Little touch over here. All right. Now, <clears throat> just take a little tiny bit of the yellow and green and put some little grassy things around this tree's foots just to bring him into the painting a little better. Let him set up here. And maybe, maybe we want to put a little tree on the other side, too. Maybe, maybe there's just a tiny little tree way back here in the distance. There we go. Let's get brave. Maybe there's two trees. And we'll take a little bit of white and mix it with a little bit of umber. And just touch, just to give some little indications. Don't want to get too bright. There we go. And with the liner brush, let's open the oil here. Take a little bit of the thin oil, Van Dyke Brown, a little umber. Just mix it a little bit thin. We'll just put some little indications of limbs on here, just here and there. Just here and there. <clears throat> now I'm going to take a little of the magic white, a little yellow, a little tiny bit of ochre mixed with it. Load a lot of paint into the bristles. And we'll just drop a few little, a few little leaf indications on there. Just here and there. There we go. 
think we got him there. Okay, maybe a stick or two right here in front of the tree. I think we've about got this rascal finished. So let me take a little bit of thin oil, a little permanent red, and we'll sign this almighty painting and call him done. Fix your paint till it's almost thin as water, then you can just write with it. Shoop, there we are. Just let it go. Next week, if you're painting along with us, we'll be doing a white canvas. So I have your canvas ready, your almighty easel set up, and we'll be waiting for you here. Until then, from all of us here, happy painting. Thank you.